playing the national anthem. This evening, Council is appreciative to have Reverend Ruben Awusu uh, Asenso from Calvary Congregation Presbyterian Church of Ghana. Pastor, welcome to Council. Thank you for being here and praying with us. Thank you, Mr. President and Council members for inviting me to come and pray for the commencement of the program. Please, shall we pray? Almighty and everlasting Father, the giver and sustainer of life, we want to thank you for bringing us safely to this meeting. We thank you for the traveling message that you've given us. We want to thank you for your kindness and compassion. We have gathered here as representatives of the city to deliberate on issues that would mutually benefit all in the city. We therefore ask for your blessings on the leaders as they discuss issues. We pray for the president as he moderates this meeting. Bless the city so that there will be a decrease in crime activities. Bless the police and all security agencies in the discharge of their duties. We pray for a better community and police relations. We also pray for a better working environment in the city. We pray for job opportunities for the unemployed, and we pray for the prosperity in homes, workplaces, churches, and gatherings. God. We pray against anything that the evil one might plan against the city to bring discomfort to anyone, to sow seeds of frustration, divorce, and disunity. We pray that all will be free to go about their activities. Finally, we ask that you direct this meeting to a successful end. Thank you for listening to our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa D. Padilla, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, President Hardin. Any person who takes any actions to obstruct or interfere with the conduct of tonight's meeting may be charged with disturbing a lawful meeting pursuant to Columbus City Code 2317.12. Any person who enters those areas of city council chambers reserved for city officials or invited guests may be charged with criminal trespass pursuant to Columbus City Code 2311.21. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Are there any additions or corrections to the journal? Hearing none, the journal is approved. Um, the first order of business this evening uh, before council is to elect a president pro tem of council following the resignation of former president pro tem Elizabeth Brown. I did it, Brown. I am going to now open the floor for nominations for president pro tem of city council. Council President, yes. I'd like to nominate Rob Dorans for President Pro Tem. Are there any other nominations to become before Council? Seeing none, the floor is closed for nominations. Clerk, please call the roll by voice on the nomination of Rob Dorans for Council President Pro Tem. If he or she has a majority of Council members of the affirmative vote, that person will assume the position. Mr. Bankston. Yes. Ms. Barossa de Padilla. Yes. 
Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Dorans? Yes. Ms. Favor? Yes. Mr. Remy? Yes. President Harden? Yes. Congratulations, President Pro Tem. Next, we need to go to the Rules and Reference Committee. I have one ordinance to take out of order. I'd like to introduce Ordinance 0287-2023. It's on the last page of the agenda. I'm Very sorry. Bad. Go ahead and grab that. And this is to amend section 111.04 of the Columbus City Codes relating to the Standing Committees of Council to repeal existing section 111.04 and to declare an emergency. Uh, I know that uh, Councilmember Barossa de Badia wants to speak on this uh, ordinance. Councilmember Flores Joris. Uh, thank you, Council President. So this ordinance is to uh, add officially to the title of the Veteran and Senior Affairs Committee to make it the Veteran, Seniors, and Disability Affairs to support individuals with disabilities and promote inclusion. The Veteran and Senior Affairs Committee is transitioning to the Veteran, Seniors, and Disability Affairs Committee. There are nearly 200,000 people living with a disability in Columbus that we know of. And by expanding the work of this committee to elevate this community, we are ensuring that Columbus stays an accessible city to all from transportation to zoning to sidewalks, we want to ensure that we are innovative in our approach to access and building for the current and the future residents of Columbus. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Barossa de Padilla, um, and obviously Councilmember will be leading that committee, and we look forward to her continued service to the residents of Columbus, uh, specifically our, our folks in our disability community who will be well served uh, through this committee. With that, uh, I move for passage of ordinance 0287-2023. Second. Clerk, please call the row. Bankston, Borough City, Padilla, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, President Harden. Thank you, uh, uh, Madam Clerk. Uh, I think at this point the clerk will now read the new committee assignments into the record. Economic Development Committee, Council Member Nicholas Bankston, Chairperson, Committee Members, Mr. Remy, Mr. Dorans, President Harden, Small and Minority Business Committee, Council Member Nicholas Bankston, Chairperson, Committee Members, Mr. Remy, Ms. Barosa de Padilla, and President Harden, Technology Committee, Council Member Nicholas Bankston, Chairperson, Committee Members, Mr. Dorans, Mr. Brown and President Harden, Public Service and Transportation Committee, Council Member Lord S. Barosa de Padilla, Chairperson, Committee Members Ms. Favor, Mr. Bankston, President Harden, Neighborhoods and Immigrant, Refugee and Migrant Affairs Committee, Council Member Lord S. Barosa de Padilla, Chairperson, Committee Members Mr. Dorans, Mr. Remy, President Harden. Veterans, Senior and Disability Affairs Committee, Council Member Lord S. Barosa de Padilla, Chairperson, Committee Members Mr. Brown, Ms. Faber, President Harden, Recreation and Parks Committee, Council Member Mitchell Brown, Chairperson, Committee Members Mr. Dorans, Mr. Bankston, President Harden, Re um, Education Committee, Council Member Mitchell Brown, Chairperson, Committee Members Ms. Faber, Ms. Barosa de Padilla, and President Harden, Public Utilities Committee, Council Member Rob Dorans, Chairperson, Committee Members Mr. Bankston, Mr. Remy, and President Harden, Zoning Committee, Council Member Rob Dorans, Chairperson, Committee Members Mr. Bankston, Ms. Barosa de Padilla, Mr. Brown, Ms. Faber, Mr. Remy, President Harden. Workforce Development Committee, Council Member Rob Dorrance, Chairperson, Committee Members Ms. Favor, Mr. Brown, President Harden. Building and Zoning Policy Committee, Council Member Rob Dorrance, Chairperson, Committee Members Mr. Bankston, Ms. Favor, and President Harden. Housing Committee, Council Member Shayla Favor, Chairperson, Committee Members Mr. Brown, Mr. Bankston, President Harden. Criminal Justice and Judiciary Committee, Council Member Shayla Favor, Chairperson, Committee Members Mr. Dorans, Ms. Barosa de Padilla, and President Harden. 
Health and Human Services Committee, Council Member Shayla Faber, Chairperson, Committee Members Ms. Barosa de Padilla, Mr. Brown, President Hardin, Public Safety Committee, Council Member Emmanuel Remy, Chairperson, Committee Members Ms. Barosa de Padilla, Mr. Dorans, President Hardin, Environment Committee, Council Member Emmanuel Remy, Chairperson, Committee Members Ms. Barosa de Padilla, Ms. Faber, President Hardin, Administration Committee, Council Member Emmanuel Remy, Chairperson, Committee Members Mr. Brown, Mr. Dorans, President Hardin, Finance Committee, Council President Shannon Harden, Chairperson, Committee Members, Mr. Bankston, Mr. Remy, and Ms. Barosa de Padilla. Rules and Reference Committee, Council President Shannon Harden, Chairperson, Committee Members, Mr. Brown, Mr. Remy, and Ms. Faber. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And let me take this time to welcome back to Council for his first uh, meeting of his second tour, uh, Council Member and Chairs of Education and Breck and Parks, Parks. Councilmember Mitch Brown, welcome back to Council. Thank you, Council President. Thank Looking you. forward to it. Thank you, sir. Um, Do I have to work with Rob Dillon? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, before we go around the, the, the dais, I wanted to take a moment to um, ask for a moment of silence for the family of Tyree Nichols and really for the entire community. On last Friday, uh, we know that the video of the murder of Tyree uh, Mr. Nichols um, was released, um, and uh, I can only speak for myself, but I, I do know that for many of us, uh, it brought us back to this old <coughs> familiar place um, where um, we see folks um, who look like, like me um, um, die at the hands of, of law enforcement. Um, in this city, we are doing better. But we still, this is a reminder that we need to continue to work to do better. Um, and that once again, um, a family is burying a loved one. Um, a young four-year-old child is losing their father. Um, and this is on all of us. And we have to be committed to continuing to get better. Uh, and so in that vein, and in keeping the Nichols family, the entire city of uh, Memphis, and truthfully, the, this country, in our thoughts and prayers, I ask for a moment of silence. Thank you. And for those who need a space to have uh, more discussions as we all process this instance and how we continue to move forward, the City of Columbus is hosting a community-wide discussion this evening at 7 p.m. at the City of Grace Church, located at 3350 Allegheny Avenue. And this forum is designed to give the community members a chance to share their feelings and work together to find solutions to challenges facing our community. Uh, the all right, I'm all out of order. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Council Member uh, Bankston. Do you have any questions or any resolutions or comments? Council Member Rosa de Padilla. Thank you, Council President. I have two announcements this evening. First, I would like to remind folks that we will be hosting a public hearing tomorrow here at <coughs> Council Chambers at 530 where we will be discussing proposed legislation which will reduce the speed limit from 35 miles per hour to 25 miles per hour in downtown Columbus. This change aligns with the strategies laid out in our city's Vision Zero plan. This plan aims to ensure zero fatalities and serious injuries from crashes on city streets. If you would like to speak or submit public testimony, please email my aide, Amaris Lemus, at AS. L E M U S at Columbus.gov before 4 p.m. tomorrow. I look forward to the conversation and thank you for all of the folks who have already submitted written testimony and for those who have already signed up to come uh, tomorrow evening. <clears throat> Secondly, um, I would like to have our speaker, Liliana Kavanaugh, if you want to start making your way to the podium. Um, I'm excited uh, to share this next uh, announcement and share the floor with uh, Director Kavanaugh. The Ohio Commission on Hispanic and Latino Affairs address, advises the state government on issues affecting Hispanic Ohioans, connects to diverse Latino communities across the state, and provide, builds the capacity of community organizations so that they may better serve the fast growing population in the state of Ohio. 
Um, I want to first acknowledge, um, as a past commissioner, this was work that was very near and dear to my heart years ago before um, w when I served as a commissioner. I want to uh, recognize our two Columbus commissioners, Beth Guzman Bowman and Yahida Rose, who are not here but serving in the central Ohio area. And then I want to turn it over to um, Director Cavanaugh uh, to be recognizing the, to recognize the 2000, 2022 recipients of the Distinguished Hispanic Ohioan Awards and the Nuestra Familia Award. Thank you very much, uh, Councilwoman Barroso de Padilla, President Hardin, and members of the council. It is our honor and privilege to have the opportunity to be here in the People's House to recognize distinguished um, citizens of the city of Columbus. We are honored to present today the Distinguished Hispanic Ohioan Award to Dr. Ariana Hoet. Uh, she is originally from Venezuela, and Dr. Huet is a clinical psychologist at Nationwide Children's Hospital in Columbus. She specializes in mental health and the professional psychological treatment of mental, behavioral, and emotional disorders. She immigrated from Venezuela with a great passion to continue to serve Latino children and families and to raise awareness about mental health, specifically in the Latino community. She serves as clinical director of the um, on your hours leaves program at Nationwide Children's Hospital, and I'm sure all of you have heard about this amazing program that has a goal to provide families with the support they need for their children. And the Distinguished Hispanic Ohio one always looks out to find a leader in our community that uh, silently and quietly is making great strides to support the growth in the community of Latinos in Ohio. So we are very honored to present Dr. Huet with the Distinguished Hispanic Ohio Award. Dr. Huet, who has the award? And um, she will receive the uh, award from our public policy officer, um, Annabelle Meles. Thank you. Our second award D is our Nuestra Familia Award. Nuestra Familia means our family. And as we know well, any immigrant, any new American does not make it here alone. We make it because we have people around us that help us to come through and to build our lives in the United States. Nuestra Familia recognizes a leader or organization who are not Hispanic or Latinos, but who have great character and community standing, as well as having performed an exceptional service to benefit Ohio Latinos. An individual of this character is Barb Smoot. She is the CEO of Weld Women for Economic and Leadership Development. Through the Weld program, many of us Latina leaders in the city, including our council uh, member Barroso de Padilla and myself, have had the opportunity to learn skills that help us in our leadership development and our business growth. Uh, also, through the Weld programs, Latina leaders in our communities have the opportunity to develop their businesses. They regularly provide scholarships so that Latina young ladies are able to participate in their programs and in their national conferences. And many of our Latina leaders from Central Ohio have been already featured on the Weld's Welding the Way calendar, a calendar that features 12 women making a positive impact on the economic and leadership development of women in Central Ohio. This recognition gives us the chance not only to be known in Central Ohio, but it's a unique opportunity to develop the leadership and the talent of Latina women. As well, WELD gives us the opportunity to serve on national boards. And right now, uh, Lilian Morales is part of the WELD's national board. So it is uh, a great honor for us on behalf of the Latino Affairs Commission to present the Nuestra Familia Award to Ms. Barbara Smith. Thank you so much for this opportunity, and on behalf of the Latino Affairs Commission and Governor DeWine's office, we are extremely thankful for the opportunity to come here to the People's House and recognize the growing leadership of Latinos in Central Ohio. Thank you. And one quick minute before you leave. I wanted to, I know because of COVID, there's usually a, a, a gala, there's usually an event that honors all the folks from around the state of Ohio. I wanted to give this opportunity to acknowledge 
really the heroes that we have here in Columbus that do this work every day, um, that people don't always know your names, that people don't always know the work that you do and how you invest in our communities. That it's not just about investing in the Latino community, it's about when you invest in community, we all benefit, right? When you invest in people, we all benefit. And so I just wanted to have the opportunity to honor, um, also women are amazing, just <laughs> saying the obvious, but I wanted to just honor the work that you do every day in the community. Mucha, mucha Felicidades, congratulations. Thank you, and thank you for the work that you do every day. Director Kavanaugh. Thank you. That's all for me. Councilmember Brown. Uh, no announcements this evening, Council President, but I would like to take a moment to thank you, uh, this council, and this council team for the opportunity to work with you again to fulfill this council's 2023 objectives. I'm excited to be working with Director Reese in Recreation and Parks and Director Smido in the Office of Education to build on the work that they have in regards to innovative ideas to try and engage our youth. It's an exciting opportunity for me uh, and it is good to see all these nice faces again. That's all I have, sir. I'm so grateful to have you back. Thank, Thank you. Press Pro Tam. Councilmember Faber. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, the first uh, resolution I have is uh, 0016X-2023 to declare February 3rd, 2023 as National Wear Red Day in the city of Columbus. I'd like to invite all of the lovely representatives of the American Heart Association to the podium. Cardiovascular disease affects men, women, and children of every age and race in the United States but it's the number one killer of women in the US, killing more women than all forms of cancer combined. In fact, heart disease is the number one killer of new moms. Women, especially black and Hispanic women, are disproportionately impacted by heart disease and stroke, and research shows heart attacks are on the rise in younger women. As chair of Council's Health and Human Services Committee, I would like to thank the American Heart Association for its ongoing work to increase heart health in Central Ohio and encourage all re our residents to focus on making small changes towards a healthier heart. Here with us today is American Heart Association Central Ohio Executive Director, Ms. Nancy and Marion, a local survivor and association volunteer. I am proud to present you all with this resolution today, but before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the podium over to you all. Thank you very much. Um, on behalf of the American Heart Association, I just want to thank you, Council Member Favor, President Hardin, and all members of Council for recognizing uh, National Wear Red Day on this Friday, February 3rd. As you've mentioned, uh, cardiovascular disease is the number one health threat, but it impacts women um, tremendously more, and it is really um, looking at their greatest health threat. It actually claims more lives than all forms of cancer combined. And most recently, the American Heart Association's Go Red for Women efforts really looked at a focus on maternal health, health as um, cardiovascular disease is the number one killer of new moms. But I'm honored today to be here represented by two uh, amazing, powerful, strong survivors and really want them to share a little bit more about their journey with heart disease and stroke. So, Marian. Good evening. Thanks again, um, Council Member Favor. President Harden, and all members of council. Uh, my name is Marion. I will share an abbreviated version of my story tonight. Um, in 2019, at the age of 35, I was about six and a half months postpartum. I began experiencing symptoms uh, that were odd for me. At, initially, I dismissed them as I was a busy mom, a career woman, uh, I need a vacation but they became more severe. So I scheduled a doctor's appointment, and out of that first appointment, I didn't get any answers. I was told you were young, no family history, uh, nothing to be concerned about, we'll just keep an eye on it. I went on to a second appointment a few days later because the symptoms became worse, um, and again, there was nothing concerning in my history. So uh, I didn't have any further testing, and I still didn't have answers. Then I, it, it became more severe and I uh, had to take myself to the emergency room. And at the emergency room, I received an incorrect diagnosis and began treating myself for what was not the problem. Um, and that treatment expedited a, a decline in my health. And um, 
about a week later, I was almost incapable of walking. Um, I had to crawl to my last appointment where I got answers uh, to get to my car. Um, it was a long journey, but I went to the appointment and at 35, um, with my heart functioning only at 15%, I uh, found out that I was in active heart failure and the condition was caused by my pregnancy. So I am thankful to be here um, and obviously standing in front of you today with answers now on my road to recovery. And I, I wanna thank you all for your support. Uh, this proclamation making February, um, sorry, Friday, uh, February 3rd, National Wear Red Day in Columbus, Ohio, uh, means a lot to me and to the women that we serve and that we can continue to save lives and advocate for women just like me every day. Uh, so I thank you all. Thank you for your support and your continued support. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Uh, you know, we just came off of the heels of a robust community conversation around uh, tobacco and how it um, impacts individuals on a daily basis uh, and thinking about how smoking can exasperate uh, a lot of those issues, especially when we're talking about cardiovascular, uh, raising awareness and continuing to shed light uh, on um, cardiovascular disease is incredibly important. Uh, but I appreciate you uh, being candid in the way um, you, you talked about your story and I'm so grateful that you were here uh, to share that information with us. And I, I've also learned uh, that we have a fellow City of Columbus employee who also is a representative for the American Heart Association, Assistant Director Dawn Turnage. Yes. yes. Thank you, thank you, President. And thank you, um, Councilman Favors, for this opportunity and everyone else also. Um, briefly, my story um, is actually in the Sunday's paper yesterday, um, if you have that access. But in 2015, I was FaceTiming my two-year-old at that time. She was two-year-old niece. Um, after a long, exhausting day of it, ignoring all kinds of symptoms um, throughout the week and the day, I um, ended up in the hospital after FaceTiming with her, my sister, her mom, noticed that I was having face droopings and symptoms of a stroke. Um, at that time, I ignored it and said I just wanted to lay down. Um, blessed that I did not do that as the, um, I was transported to the, um, to the hospital by my sister initially and uh, misdiagnosed with having Bell's palsy. From there, my other sister, who is a physician who saw what I was going through, contacted the hospital there and stated that I was having symptoms of a stroke. And I received my care right here in Columbus at, um, for a blood clot that was traveling in my left side of my neck to my brain. And they stated if I would have laid down without answering the phone that day, that I would not be here. So it's truly a blessing to do so. And from that, from that day forward, um, I have made myself a priority and encouraged others to do the same. My sentiment remains the same. Thank you so much for sharing your story. The more we can do to raise awareness about cardiovascular disease, the more lives we will help to save. Uh, so just a reminder to our listening audience, this Friday, February 3rd, is, you know, break out your best red uh, that you have. And if you don't, we've got these lovely little pins here uh, that you can find just about anywhere uh, these days. But it's important to spread the message uh, as much as we can. Are there any additional comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I would move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the row. Bangston, Borough City, Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor. Remy, President Harden. Adopt it. And then just a few announcements. First, I would like to wish everyone an early happy Black History Month. Black History Month is an entire month devoted to putting a spotlight on African Americans who have made contributions to our country. It is a celebration of those who have impacted not only the United States, but the world and their activism and achievements. I know it doesn't need to be said, but I'm going to say it. Black history is American history. 
This year's Black History Month theme is Black Resistance, Building Bridges and Navigating Barriers. This theme explores how Black Americans have resisted historic and ongoing oppression. As the current council's only Black woman member, Building Bridges and Navigating Barriers resonates with me closely. And I look forward to sharing Black History Month facts and highlighting this historical and current Black Americans who embody Black resistance throughout the month of February. Next, I'd want to remind the community about the Housing for All Marketing and Education campaign request for proposal that went live two weeks ago. We are soliciting proposals from eligible agencies to implement a comprehensive marketing, education, outreach, and event campaign to continue education on the existing Housing for All legislation, as well as any upcoming legislation. To access the RFP and for more information, please visit https www.columbus.gov slash council slash housing for all. Proposals are due by Thursday, February 2nd, 2023 at 5 p.m. and can be emailed to snjindal at columbus.gov or you can send a hard copy via mail or hand delivery to Housing for All Marketing Education Campaign, 90 West Broad Street, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. Thank you, Council President Harden. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Remy. Thank you, Council President Harden. I really don't have much except I'd like to welcome back our colleague. It's a pleasure to see you back on the dais and look forward to working with you this year. That is all I have. Thank you, Council Member. We're going to go back to Council Member Bankston. Uh, thank you, President uh, Harden. Um, we had something on consent that I just wanted to make sure that I raised. Um, if the uh, family of William David Jones could stand, I know that they're in the audience today. Uh, just wanted to recognize them. On consent, we have Resolution 21X-2023 to recognize the passing uh, and celebrate William David Jones. Uh, and so we send our sincerest condolences to their family and they came down today. So I wanted to make sure that we recognized their presence and also shared personally to my dear friend, William Washington, uh, that I share with you and your family's grief. Uh, and so does this council. Uh, and thank you for everything that you do uh, for this community and everything that your father did uh, in this community as well. Proud East High Tiger uh, and also just a dear commun community member. So want to recognize their family and also celebrate William uh, David Jones. Thank you, Council President. Thank you so much for that. Um, at this time, uh, this week's communication received by the city's clerk's office are listed on the agenda and will be published into the city bulletin. Are there any communications we ran to the record? Yes, President Harden, members of council, we have one this evening. Uh, communication to the Council of City of Columbus, Ohio, the undersigned a border revision appointed and acting pursuant to City of Columbus Resolution 14X-2023 adopted by Columbus City Council on the 9th day of January 2023 respectfully submits its report regarding the estimated assessment for the freeway Kings Hill Street Lighting Assessment Project. The Board of Revision does not recommend that the amount or method of assessment be amended. It was signed by Tynesha Harden, member, Sarah Ingalls, member, and Trent Smith, member, dated January 26th, 2023. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mm -hmm. um, are there any comments uh, by our elected officials, Auditor, City Attorney? City, uh... <coughs> At this time, I'd like to request the following ordinance be removed from the consent action portion of the agenda. Finance, uh, finance Ordinance 0028-2023 and from the Health and Human Services Committee, Ordinance 0252-2023. Are there any other requests by members of council for the removal of an ordinance? Seeing none, we now have a motion to waive the reading of Title of Third Aid legislation by the clerk. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Faber, Remy, President Harden. Thank you. Will the clerk now read to the record the ordinance number of 30 legislation on tonight's agenda for first reading? Economic Development Committee, Ordinance 3007-2022 and Ordinance 36-2023. Public Service and Transportation Committee, Resolutions 1X, 2X, 11X-2023 and Ordinance 73-2023. Public Utilities Committee, Ordinances 4 
45, 52, 56, 60, 61, 63, 64, 65, 69, 70, 71, 72, 75, 76, 78, 81, 87, 92, 95, 114, 139, and 163 2023 Housing Committee Ordinances 3582 2022 and 251 2023 Public Safety Committee Ordinance 3577 2022 and 44111 2023 Zoning Committee Ordinances 23 excuse me, 0230-2023 and 0271-2023. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We don't have any speakers on the, con the first reading uh, portion of the agenda, so the following ordinance appear on our agenda as consent action. Will the clerk now read those into the record? Resolutions of expression 21X, 20X, 17X, and 19X-2023. Economic Development Committee Resolution 18X-2023, Ordinances 37, 214, 249-2023. Small and Minority Business Committee Ordinance 94 and 289-2023. Public Service and Transportation Committee Resolution 234 X 254X-2022 and ordinances 2364, 3044-2022, also ordinances 15, 19, 27, 29, 31, 113, 128, and 219-2023. Recreation and Parks Committee ordinances 2818 and 3021, 3022, 3024, 3449, 3515, 3517, 3521 2022. Education Committee Ordinance 207 2023. Public Utilities Committee Ordinances 66, 67, 88, 93, 104, 110, 134, 140, 152, 183, 185, 196, 212, and 229 2023. Building and Zoning Policy Committee Ordinance 182 2023. Housing Committee Ordinances 3579-3580-2022 and Ordinances 4796-161-2023. Health and Human Services Committee Ordinance 3422-2022 and Ordinances 8486-145-2023. Two sixty seven, two sixty eight, three oh six, three oh eight, twenty twenty three. Public Safety Committee Ordinances thirty five, thirty one, thirty five, seventy six, twenty twenty two, and Ordinances one seventy five, two eleven, twenty twenty three. Environment Committee Ordinance thirty two, twenty twenty three. Administration Committee Ordinances one twelve and one sixty seven, twenty twenty three. Finance Committee Ordinance thirty five, eleven, thirty five, sixty six. 2022 and ordinances 48, 107, 179, and 233 2023. Appointments from the mayor's office numbered A0005, 7, 8, 12, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35 2023. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, we have several speakers on the consent portion of the agenda. Uh, the first speaker to come before council is Mr. Nate Wilkins. <clears throat> Mr. Wilkins is speaking uh, on Ordinance 0096-2023 from the Housing Committee. Nate, Mr. Wilkins, welcome back to council. Just a reminder, you have three minutes. 1612 Arlington Avenue, Mr. Lathan, George Wilkins. I'm uh, going to speak in uh, favor. I'd just like to have more clarification uh, where would this money be used for, for $230,000. Um, but I have quested for uh, $789,000 and 75 cents. Um, I'd just like to have more details into this clarification, how this money will be broken down to. But again, I'd like to to suggest of uh, more money to just at the end of this for $789,000.75. So again, I'd just like to see this to be extended for more than three to four years in the city of Ohio era. Thank you for your time. 
Uh, Council President, these dollars are being used to purchase some vacant parcels to consolidate some of our land bank parcels to move forward with doing some type of uh, affordable housing low income tax credit project on Mount Street. Thank you so much, uh, Director. Next speaker to come for Council is Mr. Joe Motil. Mr. Motil is speaking on Ordinance 0268 2023 and the Health and Hu Human Services Committee. Mr. Motil, welcome back to Council. Good evening, Joe Motel, 167 West Cook Road, Columbus, uh, President Council, members of the City Council, President Hardin. I'm in favor of this ordinance, but I have concerns. Earlier today, remediation contractors hired by the city to enforce the mayor and the City Council's bulldozer diplomacy policy of wasting taxpayer dollars decimated a homeless encampment on Silver Drive just east of Clintonville. Also, taxpayer dollars were wasted while three police officers sat in their cruisers nearby when their time should have been better utilized in the precinct that covers the Linden neighborhood across the freeway. One has to wonder just how the city is going to utilize last week's information that was obtained during HUD's annual required homeless count in the location of our city's encampments. After what I observed today, it would seem that that information is going to serve as a map to better pinpoint and schedule the next eradication of a homeless encampment and displacement of human beings trying to find transitional housing. But instead, they're being forced to find another outdoor encampment site. And I know that for a fact, having spoke to the young couple that was staying at the Silver Drive site. On September 19, 2022, as part of a transitional housing pilot program, City Council approved a $300,000 service contract with the Community Shelter Board to house 14 residents of the Camp St. Shameless East Side Encampment in a Far East Side Hotel. That contract remains in effect until September 12, 2023. It's my understanding that there are only seven of the original 14 residents still residing at the hotel. Why isn't the shelter board utilizing these taxpayer dollars to provide transitional, transitional housing at this hotel when funding was made available for 14 people and only seven are currently staying there? Columbus Dispatch story from September 13, 2022 stated that a city official claimed, quote, this transitional housing program has been in development for more than two years and outreach workers identified the individual staying at the Mound Street encampment to be ideal participants based on their motivation to find stable housing, end of quote. But yet the city issued a trespassing and eviction notice for those residents. The public knows the real reason why those residents were provided with tra transitional housing, and it wasn't because of some two-year program that purported to be in the works. Even if that were true, I would love to see that two-and-a-half-year-old transitional housing program and what exactly it entails, because if you have spent that much time on such a program, the unsheltered who are currently being displaced by bulldozer diplomacy should have transitional housing available. In closing, after the embarrassing March 2021 60 minute story that was broadcast around the world on Columbus, Ohio's homeless problem, you would have thought our elected officials would have taken immediate steps to put long-term funding and policies into place, but instead the city approved $875,000 in CDBG funds for three fancy outdoor downtown public restrooms and not a dime for portable toilets near encampments. Over $200,000 has been spent to bulldoze encampments due to trash and sanitation issues, but not a dime to locate a 10-yard dumpster or hand washing stations nearby. And you're still sitting on millions of ARP dollars that could be utilized to help with providing transitional housing and other remedies. Last year, right. at least 154 homeless persons died in Columbus. And after all these years, why don't we have a written city policy that addresses our unsheltered, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna city funded off. tiny homing villages and other means of transitional housing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Director Stevens, is, is there a response specifically or just a, in general? I, I had a very in-depth uh, conversation We've gone out with the, the folks who run our home, homeless uh, uh, work, do our homeless work in the city. Uh, I know that it is uh, in-depth and I know that we're doing a lot um, and Mr. Motil brought up a lot of things, but I just want to make sure that there is an opportunity to respond. Uh, thank you, Council President, members of Council. Uh, we continue to engage through the Community Shelter Board system, utilize outreach to uh, work with those individuals who are unhoused and living on the land. Um, 
we feel it's important that all of our residents have shelter and, and, and a home to go to. So we will continue to work with them, uh, meet them where they are, provide them the, the wraparound services uh, that the um, community engagement team that provides. Uh, this particular ordinance um, is just extending the contract we have with CSB. Uh, they had a transition to outreach providers last year, have not utilized all the funding, and this gives, us, gives them the opportunity to utilize all of that. Thank you, Director. Mr. Motel, I'll let you go over. You, so. have, you have space uh, available. You need to use it. Appreciate okay, you. The money's there. Mr. Motel, the Mr. Motel we are in the meeting. Thank you. The next, speaker to come, the next speaker to come before council is Juan Harding, speaking on public safety ordinance number 0175. Hmm. <laughs> What's going on, Hobgoblins? Don't worry, it's just pictures. Uh, before we begin, I would just like to say, Councilman Brown, look at you, back in the old pervert rodeo, a true Republican in the flesh. Councilman Remy, I know that's, you gotta be real salty having a Republican competitor back on the platform with you. Are you speaking on the ordinance? I am, I am. Uh, I don't know which one it is. I know it's about cops and you're going to give money uh, from one cop pocket to another when you could give it to somebody else. So I just wanted to call, come in here and go through a couple things. I see the clock's running. This is your statement. Fuck it. Do it in the shade. This is your statement on Tyree Nichols in Memphis. You had to look at your notes for the city. Now, I'm a writer, right? And it's about the words that you don't say as much as the words that you do say. And in this phrase, I look at it right here. I don't see the word police. Who beat Tyree Nichols to death? None of you have it? None of you saw the video? It was five police officers. Brother, this is what they did to you. Right here, an out of town suburbanite who probably lives in Union County, doesn't even pay taxes, doesn't live in here, came here and treated you and a congresswoman like this. I was right there. How do you think cops like him are treating people that look like you in this city when they're doing this to you? They brought you to your knees, brother to your knees in your own city. Somebody who doesn't even live here, doesn't even pay taxes, can't even vote against you. And now you're up here about to hand them money when people are starving? I mean, I'm not trying to get all worked up. I got a minute. I'm not trying to get worked up the last time because what you don't know, I'm not drinking anymore. So I got the time for all of you. And I'm here for Shannon today. But you people, get some respect. You don't even campaign. None of you even won a real election. You got your power on the cocktail circuit, schmoozing, kissing ass. It's disgusting. And you want to come up here and you want to remember Tyree Nichols and you're going to let some out of pocket honky come in here and talk to you like this because you won't even say the word police. You should be ashamed. And I'm not walking out. I want some discourse. 30 seconds. Let's go. You're turning over your time? No, I'm not. I want some discourse from my elected council members. I want to hear you say the word police, that Tyree Nichols got beaten to death by police. Just the word police. That's it. Now go. <clears throat> you have 12 seconds. You have 12 seconds. So say the word police. <laughs> you know, I think low of you guys. I think you guys are the bottom drawers. You're just as bad as the state house Republicans. But honestly, Thank you're you. worse. You're worse. Thank you. Because you think you have a conscience. Thank but you. I figured Your out time is over. Show. Yeah. Man, my time's just beginning. Because you guys suck and you aren't doing anything. The next speaker to come, the next speaker to come before council is Dorsey Hager, speaking on appointments. Uh, appointments A0029-2023.
All right. Um, it's always a pleasure to speak in front of council. Um, I apologize here. Uh, it's always a pleasure to speak in front of council. President Hardin, thank you so much for the time. Council Member Remy, Council Member Favor, Council Member Bankston, Council Member Barossa de Padilla, thank you guys. Council Member Dorns, congratulations being elected by your peers. Council Member Brown, always great to see you again. Congratulations on the reappointment. So, so let me start off by saying, um, for anybody in the uh, hall who doesn't know me, my name's Dorsey Hager. I have the pleasure of serving as the Executive Secretary Treasurer of the Columbus Central Ohio Building Construction Trades, where I represent 18,000 members, Columbus and Central Ohio. Uh, I also had in my notes that I was a proud and am a proud citizen of Union County, but we're gonna skip past that after our last speaker. So I still have two minutes and 20 seconds left. I am here to speak as eloquently as I can, so stand by with me here. Um, on the appointment tonight of the Community Benefits Agreement Committee, I spoke here about a month and a half ago with NAACP President Nana Watson. Uh, obviously we worked very diligently with the administration and council on the formation of this committee and the passage of the usage so that we can continue to establish and utilize more community benefit agreements here in the city of Columbus. Community benefit agreements, or CBAs as they are called, guarantee that the workforce on the project will make the area standard wage as well as health care and pension benefits and that apprenticeship apprentices will participate in state approved apprenticeship programs. Our last CBA that was utilized by the Columbus Central Ohio uh, uh, in partnership with the Columbus Building Trades and used by the city of Columbus was at the Linden Rec Center. At the Linden Rec Center, the project finished ahead of schedule it was under budget and it was done safely, all while utilizing local residents, women, people of color, and veterans. I've got a little over a minute left, so I'm just gonna speak real quick about the Linden Project. For us to be able to take members of the community, Linden specifically, uh, people of color, females, and take them on that job site and show them people from their community that they go to church with, that they went to school with, that they see weekly at the grocery store on that project doing the work of the building trades and seeing the middle class living that they were making uh, really gave us a lot of hope. As you know, Kelly Harrop is here. She's our communications and outreach director. She currently runs along with the building trades our Building Futures program, which began in 2017. 92.6% of those students in the program graduate, 89% of the graduates are placed in a trade program, and as of today, the starting salary is $54,000 a year. That's before benefits are factored in. 36% of the students have been justice involved at some point in their lives, and 20% of our graduates are female, which shatters the national average of 3% which is incredible. And many of our residents from Celebrate One neighborhoods have been given the training through these Building Futures programs, the soft skills, the financial literacy necessary to get on the direct path to the middle class. What you all are doing here tonight and the committee that you're appointing is not only gonna proceed with community benefit agreements on these projects to give us the vehicle to get more residents of the city of Columbus onto that path to the middle class, but it's also gonna be utilized on other projects as this committee looks how they can get more people of color, more females, more vets, more members of our communities on that direct path to the middle class. And the Columbus Building Trades looks forward in partnering with you on this. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Mr. Hager. Thank you for your advocacy. Thank you for the work of so many folks. Uh, it's been years in the making, certainly wanna recognize and, and open it up. Councilman, if you have anything else to say, but uh, a lot of folks helped him uh, get us here. And I think this, this is just the work getting started, so it's great. Are there any other questions or comments on the consent portion of the agenda? Seeing none, may we have a motion of approval of these items designated as consent? Is there a second? Oh, sorry, clerk, please call the row. My voice. Just Mr. Bankston. Yes, with the exception of ordinances 19, 128, 161, 268-2023, from which I'm abstaining. Ms. Barosa de Padilla? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Dorans? Yes. Ms. Faber? Yes, with the exception of 2818-2022, 267-2023, and 306-2023, from which I'm abstaining. And my apologies, A0005-2023, from which I'm abstaining. Mr. Remy? Yes. President Harden? Yes. Ordinance uh, consent agenda is passed with the noted exceptions. 
We'll now proceed with the second reading of 30-day postponed and emergency legislation. The first committee to come before council is Economic Development Committee, chaired by Councilmember Bankston. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Harden. Tonight in the Economic Development Committee for second reading, we have Ordinance 0162-2023 to authorize the Director of the Department of Development to enter into a grant agreement with the Columbus Downtown Development Corporation to provide operating funding to advance economic and community development initiatives in an amount not to exceed $1 million to authorize the appropriation and expenditure of up to $1 million and to declare an emergency. Uh, this ordinance simply provides ongoing funding to the CDDC for the continued implementation of the downtown strategic plan and ongoing operating support for continued downtown development efforts. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Bankston, Barroso de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Faber, Remy, President Harden. Thank you, Council President. That's all I have in my committees this evening. Great. This committee comes next. Let's see here. Sorry. That was quick. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. The next committee to come before Council is the Public Service and Transportation Committee, chaired by Councilmember Barroso de Padilla. Thank you, Council President. I have one ordinance today in public service. 0051-2023 to authorize the Director of Public Service to enter into an agreement with Strasser Paving Company for the Pedestrian Safety Improvements Maple Canyon Avenue Sidewalks Project to authorize the expenditure of up to $1,624,446.20 from the Streets and Highways Bond Fund for the project and to declare an emergency. So this is a part of the Maple Canyon Avenue Sidewalks Project. This ordinance includes the installation of new sidewalks, curb ramps, lighting, post constructions, PMB, no, M, no, BMPs, and detention along the east side uh, of Maple Canyon Avenue from 350 feet south of Webster Canyon Court to Juliet Drive and other work as may be necessary. Do my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Is there a second? Clerk, please call the row. Bankston, Barroso de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. That's all for me. Thank you, Madam Chair. The next committee to come before council is the Recreation and Parks Committee, chaired by Councilmember Brown. <coughs> Thank you, Council President. This evening, I have Ordinance 3129 2023 to authorize the Director of Recreation and Parks to enter a contract with Mid Ohio Select Soccer League for the purchase of soccer goals to waive the competitive bidding provisions of Columbus City Code Chapter 329 to authorize the appropriation of $50,000 within the Recreation and Parks Permanent Improvement Fund to authorize the transfer of $50,000 within the Recreation and Parks Permanent Improvement Fund to authorize the amendment of the 2022 Capital Improvement Budget to authorize the expenditure of $50,000 from the Recreation and Parks Permanent Improvement Fund and to declare an emergency. Director Reese, would you please explain why you wish a bid request or bid waiver on this legislation, please? Thank you, Chair Brown, President Harden, and other council members. Um, the Mid Ohio Soccer Select League um, has been under a 10 year lease with the department um, that ended in December 2022. Um, they currently have goals on the site um, which are under warranty. Um, and so if we purchase those from them, uh, we are paying 50000 versus approximately about $120,000. Um, and so we look to stand starting in spring of this year. Uh, we currently have 10 tournaments, practices, and games scheduled at Spindler Road Park alone, about approximate of $150,000 in revenue. Um, and so this is the reasoning why we are looking to waive the bid. Thank you, Director Reese. If there are no questions from my colleagues, I move for passage and I ask for a voice vote. Clerk, please call the roll by voice. Mr. Bankston? Yes. Ms. Barroso de Padilla? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Dorans? Yes. Ms. Faber? Yes. Mr. Remy? Yes. President Harden? Yes. Ordinance is passed. That's all I have this evening, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Next committee coming before our council is the Public Utilities Committee. That committee is chaired by President Pro Tim uh, Dorrance. And the floor is yours. 
Thank you, Council President. We have in Public Utilities Ordinance 0057-2023 to authorize the Finance and Management Director to associate all general budget reservations resulting from this ordinance with the appropriate current and pending universal term purchase agreements, the purchase of sewer treatment chemicals for the division of sewage and drainage to authorize the expenditure of up to $4,540,000 from the sewage operating fund and to declare an emergency. <coughs> Um, this ordinance is set uh, for purchase of sewer treatment chemicals for the division of sewer and drainage and is contingent on the passage of the 2023 operating budget. Uh, emergency de designation is being requested to avoid delays in purchasing necessary chemicals for our sewage treatment process. Don't my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 0059-2023 to authorize the Director of Public Utilities to amend the 2022 Capital Improvement Budget for Professional Construction Management Services used at the Department's Wastewater Treatment Facilities to authorize a, a transfer of cash and appropriation within the Sanitary, sewer, sanitary Bond Fund to authorize the Auditor's Office to establish an Auditor Certificate for the Professional Construction Management Services Number 3 project for the Department of Public Utilities to authorize the expenditure of up to $3,927,320.69 to the Sanitary Bond Fund for the Professional Construction Management Services Number 3 project and to declare an emergency. Uh, this contract will provide professional construction management services for wastewater treatment facilities and as assist the downtown our division of sewer and drainage in implementing construction of treatment, uh, tr treatment plant facilities in the capital improvement program. Uh, emergency designation is requested so that the contracting process that has been on hold pending the correction in the purchase orders can be completed as soon as possible in order to prevent additional delays and project disruptions. Do any of my colleagues have questions or comments? See you on and move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the row. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 0068-2023 to authorize the Finance and Management Director to associate all general budget reservations resulting from this ordinance with the appropriate current and pending universal term contract purchase agreements for the purchase of water treatment chemicals for the Division of Water to authorize the expenditure of uh, $18,500,000 from the Water Operating Fund and declared emergency. Uh, this ordinance is for the purchase of water treatment chemicals for the Division of Water and is also contingent on the passage of the 2023 operating budget. Uh, emergency designation is requested to avoid delays in purchasing chemicals necessary for water treatment processes. Uh, this will allow our Division of Water to continue to provide safe, reliable drinking water to citizens of Columbus and those communities that our department serves. Do my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Thanks, Dan Barosity, Padilla, Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. And finally, in the committee, I have Ordinance 0103-2023 to authorize the Director of Public Utilities to modify and increase the contract purchase of wholesale electric power and ancillary services with American Municipal Power, Inc. for the Division of Power to authorize expansion of $59,785,000 from the uh, Electricity Operating Fund and to declare an emergency. Uh, the funds authorized by this ordinance will cover the cost of power supply and additional ancillary services powered by AMP Inc., such as diesel generator maintenance, representation of federal uh, power issues, staff training, and customer development services. This ordinance is being submitted as emergency to allow for the, for the purchase of power needed to keep the division of power operating and running safely, which will allow the division to efficiently and effectively provide power to citizens of Columbus that are serviced by our utility. Do I make colleagues some questions or comments? Seeing on a move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Thanks, Den Barosity, Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. Thank you, Council President. That's all I have at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The next committee to come before Council is the Criminal Justice and Judiciary Committee, uh, chaired by Councilmember Favor. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council President Harden. Tonight in Criminal Justice and Judiciary, we have Ordinance 0058 2023 to authorize and direct the City Attorney to settle the lawsuit captioned Timothy Davis versus City of Columbus, United States District Court. Court case number 217CV823 to authorize the expenditure of the sum of $225,000 from the jural fund and settlement of the lawsuit and to declare an emergency. About se around September 1st, 2017, defendant officers Matthew Baker, Sean Conair, Eric Everhart, Anthony Johnson, Levon Moorfield, and Robert Reffitt were working the Zone 5 Violent Crime Working Group. The working group was looking for a plaintiff, Davis, who had outstanding misdemeanor and felony warrants arising out of both Ohio and Kentucky. 
When the working group learned that Davis would be at the Livingston Market, they proceeded to that location in order to arrest Davis pursuant to his warrants. The officers arrived at the Livingston Market and visually confirmed Davis's presence. They saw Davis exit the market and stand just outside before Davis observed the officers and retreated back into the store. Officer Johnson was the first to make contact with Davis and informed him of his arrest, as well as gave verbal commands. Officer Johnson then grabbed Davis's left wrist and again informed him that he was under arrest. What followed was a lengthy struggle between the officers and Davis to effectuate Davis's arrest. After the officers aired for backup, defendant officers Ryan Steele and Alan Bennett arrived. Officer Bennett attempted several times to deploy his division-issued taser, but this was unsuccessful in subduing Davis. Mr. Davis was eventually apprehended and arrested. As a result of this arrest, Mr. Davis alleged a violation of his Fourth Amendment right to be free from excessive force against each of the eight individual defendant officers, state law, assault and battery against each individual defendant, and money claim against the city. Although a jury trial was held in December 2021 and all defendants were found not to be liable, the district court recently granted the plaintiff a partial new trial. The district court conducted a settlement conference on December 19, 2022, at which the terms of a settlement were agreed to by all parties. The city attorney's office and the Department of Public Safety recommended approval of the settlement as being the best interest of the city. Uh, we are joined tonight uh, by one of our assistant city attorneys. Uh, would you mind uh, providing any additional information that I may have left out of the... Um, Good evening, Chair Favor, President Harden, members of council. Um, you covered it very well. All I will add, Chair Favor, is that, um, you know, we did win the initial <laughs> jury trial, but the court did grant the motion for a new trial in part. Uh, the settlement conference uh, was held and the parties reached a full settlement with no admission of liability on behalf of the city or its police officers. And the plaintiff signed a full and total release of all claims. Uh, both the department and the city attorney believe that this settlement is in the best interest of the city in order to avoid uh, any potential liability that could come from a, a new jury hearing these claims and potentially awarding liable or damages to the plaintiff along with punitive damages and potentially attorney fees award. So uh, it would be our uh, opinion that this is in the best interest of the city to settle and we would respectfully request that council adopt the ordinance approving the settlement. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. I appreciate that. I think, you know, we would be remiss if we didn't ask uh, what policies have been implemented to ensure that um, in a situation does, does not occur um, again like this one, uh, especially given uh, the climate of what we all are discussing, not just in the city, Columbus, but uh, across this country. And I don't know if that question is best for you or our Department I, of Public Safety. I would safety. respectfully uh, defer to the Department of Public Safety on that. I apologize for putting you on the spot. No problem. I can't uh, really address specifically uh, any changes in policy. Uh, there's a situation where arrest was attempted. It was a um, significant resistance, and uh, they overcame the resistance. I think initially there was belief that uh, uh, with the original case being resolved in the, in the favor of the city, you know, it all came on after after a uh, uh, the, the case was granted again. So I don't I can't really can't speak to you as to whether any changes were made. I can look into it and get back with you. That would be very helpful if we could just have uh, something in writing. Um, you know, you see eight officers and one individual. Um, I think it probably does raise some red flags for folks as they're uh, viewing tonight's council meeting. So that'd be much appreciated. Are there any additional questions by my colleagues at this time? See, yes, Councilmember Bankston. I, I just wanted to clarify where, what source of revenue this is coming from. Is this general fund correct? That That's is correct. correct. And I know that, and we just saw it in the previous piece of legislation that there is a seizure fund that officers have. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason why we can't utilize that fund? For instances like this, where 
officers are costing taxpayers dollars by their actions? This is a question that comes up every time we have uh, one of these settlements, but please. Yeah, uh, to answer your question, Council Member Bankston, um, our office has looked into that, and um, I don't want to reveal any attorney-client privilege communications, but we believe that that is not lawful at the present time to be able to use that fund in the way that you're asking. Got it. And I, and I just raised those so that it's on the record, because again, on the heels of everything that has happened, I think it's cognizant for us to get this right. Uh, we have made tremendous progress in Columbus, but at the end of the day, when mistakes are made by our officers, there are lives at stake, and there's also money that the taxpayers have to put up for that. So I just want to make sure that I put that up, and we go through these, and we have to do it because I think that it's the right thing to do, uh, but it is a frustrating vote today. And so I just wanted to make sure that I asked those questions. So thank you, Madam Chair, for indulging me. No, I appreciate you raising that, uh, Councilmember Bankston, and I will ask the um, the next logical question um, of why we cannot um, uh, why we can't address qualified immunity here in Columbus. Why that is not um, something that we can move forward on. Um, I honestly am not prepared for that question, council okay. member, and I would be happy to talk to City Attorney Klein and Chief uh, Counsel Laura Baker, and we'd be happy to set up a meeting to discuss that with you. I appreciate you taking the hard questions, uh, both the City Attorney's Office and uh, Department of Public Service. Um, I think that as legislators, it's, we have to do our due diligence to ask these tough questions. Um, you know, especially in this climate. And so I, I, I would appreciate responses uh, accordingly. Uh, with that, I'd move for passage. Is there a second? Second. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. Uh, may I move on to Health and Human Services? Uh, in Health and Human Services, we have Ordinance 3356-2022 to authorize the Board of Health to modify and increase an existing contract with Emoka Mobile Health for continued contact tracing services for infectious diseases, including but not limited to COVID-19 and measles, to authorize the Board of Health to modify and extend the existing contract with Emoka Mobile Health through July 31st, 2023, to authorize the expenditure of $795,398.67 from the Health Department Grants Fund for said contract to waive the competitive bidding requirements of city code and to declare an emergency. This ordinance will increase the contract amount by an additional $795,398.67 for a total contract amount not to exceed $5,147,827.67 and to extend those contract services through July 31st, 2023. If there are no questions or concerns, I move for passage. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Faber, Remy, President Harden. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 0144 2023 to authorize and direct the Board of Health to accept the grant service contract from the Alcohol, Drug, and Mental Health Board of Franklin County in the amount of $1,628,517.44 to authorize the appropriation of $1,973,517.44. $17.44, which includes program revenues to the health department in the health department grants fund and to declare an emergency. The Alcohol and Drug Services ADS Prevention Program will serve approximately 4,386 unique clients who may receive multiple services through Columbus City Schools, after school summer programs, Latina prevention programming, HIV early intervention sites, parenting classes, and recreation centers. Of this number, approximately 1,640 adults and family members will be served, 2,141 children and adolescents through youth programming, and 605 transitional youth will be served through youth mentoring, workforce development, and programming. If there are no questions or concerns, I'd move for passage. Second. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Faber, Remy, President Harden. If we could go back to page 17 on consent, and I will turn the floor over to Council Member Barossa de Padilla. 
Thank you, Councilmember Favor. Uh, if we could go back to page 17 on the consent agenda, ordinance 0252-2023 to authorize the Director of Development of the Department of Development to enter into a grant agreement with the Community Shelter Board in the amount of up to $184,340,000 to provide housing support and service uh, coordination for the residents of Latitude 525 apartment complex to authorize the transfer of $184,340 from the general fund citywide account to the Department of Development general fund budget and to authorize the expenditure of $184,340 from the 2023 general fund budget to approve expenditures incurred prior the approval of the purchase order and to declare an emergency. On December 25th, 2022, Latitude 525, an apartment complex located on the near east side was declared unsafe due to pipe bursts and subsequent flooding. As a result, 150 households in the apartment complex were immediately evacuated. With assistance from the American Red Cross of Greater Columbus and the Central Ohio Transit Authority, an emergency shelter was established at the Dodge Recreation Center to serve the tenants. Given the extensive damage and long-standing need for complex-wide repairs, a longer-term relocation option for residents is necessary. The Community Shelter Board mobilized to provide temporary housing in, ho in motels for over 140 individuals, coordinating accommodations, meals, transportation, and linkage to on-site county agencies. In partnership with Franklin County Board of Commissioners and the City of Columbus, longer-term support will be provided for the displaced residents, including three months of accommodations, working with relocation specialists to identify long-term housing options, delivery of meals, transportation, staffing costs, as well as security services. This legislation authorizes the Director of Development to enter in a grant, into a grant agreement with the Community Shelter Board to continue to provide service coordination for the residents of Latitude 525 apartment complex. So first, I'd like to start with Director Stevens. Is there anything further that you would like to add? Uh, President Hardin, uh, Chair Prosa de Padilla, and members of council, I just would like to give a, a brief update on some of the impact of the residents and, and some of the work that's been done. As of January 27, 43 households have identified new housing with some moving already. We have um, interviewed 97 of the 154 households that have been impacted. We are prioritizing pregnant mothers, seniors, and those with health issues. And if you are a resident at Latitude 525 and have not been contacted by Rosetta Brown, please call 614-421-6333. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions with regards to the ordinance. Thank you. Do my colleagues have any questions for Director? Um, I'd like to move on to Director Messer. Is there other updates that you could provide to us about the current state of the building? Yes, uh, President Council, other members of uh, Council, I would say that from, a, you know, my department is largely focused right now on the uh, repairs and the construction that's going on at the site. Um, I would say before I get into those details, um, if there is anything good that's came out of the situation, it's that I've been very proud to see such cooperation and response from folks that I work with on a daily basis. Um, lots and lots of people have risen to the occasion to do whatever they, they can. Unfortunately, the building itself is um, subject to a more recent problem where once they began to do some repairs, um, some asbestos was um, found in the building, which has put sort of a halt on the repairs at this point. And um, we are working with uh, the owners have hired a, a remediation company who are in the building now and we're working with them to try to ascertain next steps. It's created another hardship for residents that have already endured quite a lot in that they do not have access to any of their personal belongings uh, in each of the apartments because they're off limits due to the asbestos contamination. So um, as you can imagine, that has put a lot of additional stress and pressure on folks that have already really endured quite uh, uh, a mess over there. So um, more to come. We're partnering with the city attorney's office. There's a hearing in front of the environmental judge on February the 13th uh, where we will begin to work to try to still take more remedial measures uh, partnering with the city attorney's office. Thank you. And I would like one more update and then I'll open it back up to my colleagues to ensure that there's other questions that we want to answer or, or might have. Um, 
Uh, Assistant Attorney, can you give us any update on where we might be with the legalities or, that are surrounding um, Sawyer Towers or Latitude 5? I know um, Council Member <laughs> Barosa de Padilla, uh, members of Council, I know that our zone team led by Steve Dunbar is working very diligently on that. Um, and I personally don't have an update on that tonight. Um, but I will be happy to have Steve, uh, Mr. Dunbar's team reach out to you. Great, thank you. So I want to open it back up to my colleagues. Are there are questions. So I just wanted to say, I know that we've had folks here um, that have come on behalf of the residents at Sawyer Tower. And I think that I know that this has been a learning process for not just the city, but for the county of us understanding that we know that we have vulnerable buildings um, throughout the city of Columbus. And we have to work within the system that we have that that is not the system that is a favorite of anybody who's sitting here today, but that we have to work within the system that we have to provide for our residents. And this was an unfortunate incident that happened, first of all, during one of the coldest days of the year, during a holiday, during a time where this is about community. And while we did our best, I know that there are places where we fell short and it certainly felt that way for our residents. And so we're continuing to do better. I wanna thank my colleagues who I know that many of them reached out to residents, have met with residents. I know we've been having ongoing communications with um, folks. I know that there have been people in the community, both um, individuals and organizations that have come together to support um, residents during this time and while we should apply um, that this is the good, this is the best of Columbus when we can come together like this. There is a lot of learning lessons that we have to do as a city so that we can continue to care for our residents. So I want to thank you all for um, the updates. We'll, we should continue to have this conversation and update our residents about what's happening and how we're caring for folks and ensuring that at some point they can get their belongings back and at some point they do have a place that they can truly call home. So with that... Um, I need to go back to my notes because there's a couple measures that I have here. Uh, so first, I would like to amend to 30-day. Uh, Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Bankston. Abstain. Ms. Barosa de Padilla. Yes. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mr. Dorans. Yes. Ms. Favor. Abstain. Mr. Remy. Yes. President Harden. Yes. Uh, next, I would like to waive second reading. Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Bankston. Abstain. Ms. Barroza de Padilla. Yes. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mr. Dorans. Yes. Ms. Faber. Mr. Remy. Yes. President Harden. Yes. And that, lastly, I'd like to move for passage Sorry. as amended by voice. <laughs> Mr. Clerk, Bank, Mr. Yeah. Bankston. Abstain. Ms. Barroza de Padilla. Yes. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mr. Dorans. Yes. Ms. Faber. Mr. Remy, yes. President Harden. Yes. Order is passed. Thank you. Thank you, Council President Harden. That's all I have in my committees. Thank you, Madam Chair. Next committee to come before Council is the Administration Committee, chaired by Councilman Remy. Councilman, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Council President Harden. Tonight I have one ordinance. Ordinance 106, 2023, to authorize the Director of the Department of Human Resources to enter into contract with the law firm of Baker Hostetler LLP for the purpose of providing assistance with collective bargaining negotiations and related activities to authorize the expenditure of 300000 from the Employee Benefits Fund to weigh the competitive bidding requirements of the Columbus City Codes and to declare an emergency. The Director of Human Resources seeks the authority to utilize the services of the law firm of Baker and Hostetler LLP for collective bargaining negotiations and related activities. Baker and Hostetler has been solicited to provide assistance because of its experience representing the City of Columbus in previous negotiations with all bargaining units. This leg legislation authorizes the Director of Human Resources to enter into contract with Baker and Hostetler and will further authorize the expenditure of 300000 to compensate the contractor for services rendered in conjunction with the collective bargaining negotiations and related activities. The competitive bid process would not be conducive to ongoing and anticipated negotiations as this law firm brings a wealth of institutional knowledge and experience in ongoing labor relations issues with the City of Columbus. Therefore, competitive bidding requirements are being waived. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues this evening? 
Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. That is all I have this evening. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The final committee to come before council is the Finance Committee. We're going to go back to page 20. Uh, in the consent portion of the agenda to ordinance 02, 0028-2023. Um, and this is uh, to authorize the Director of Finance and Management on behalf of the Office of Construction Management to enter into a construction contract with the Ryder Company for the Department of Public Safety, 1800 East Livingston Avenue, East uh, Apparatus Base Slab Replacement Project, and to authorize a transfer and expenditure up to $426,100 within the safety voted capital fund. To authorize, excuse me, an amendment to the 2022 capital improvements budget and to declare an emergency. Uh, the department identified some irregular irregularities in the bidding and review process and thus have asked council to postpone this ordinance indefinitely. Uh, and are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move to postpone indefinitely. Sorry. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, the final ordinance that we have this evening is A0036-2023. I'd like to introduce, introduce this from the floor. It's the appointment of Miss Nana Watson, P.O. Box 9463, Columbus, Ohio, 43209, to serve on the Community Benefits Agreements Advisory Committee with a new term, expiration date of January 1st, 2026. Are there any questions or comments? I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Faber, Remy, President Harden. Uh, adopt it. Are there any other? Uh, any, anything else to come for council? Seeing none, I move for a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Purpose call the row. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Faber, Remy, President Harden. We are adjourned. We will reconvene in five minutes.
everybody don't stop, don't quit. Do it like this. Do it like this. Do it like this. Regular meeting number three will now come to order. Clerk, please call the roll. Bangston, Barosa D. Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Clerk, please call the roll. Bangston, Barosa D. Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Are there any additions or corrections to the journal? Hearing none, the journal is approved. We'll now go to the zoning committee. Councilmember Dor uh, President Pro Tem Dorrance chairs it. All members serve on it. Councilmember Laura Shores. Thank you, Council President. Before beginning tonight's zoning agenda, allow me to briefly explain our current rules pertaining to speaking before Council on rezoning and variances. We will only hear staff presentations for ordinances that have a disapproval from a recommending body or if we have a public speaker signed up to speak against an ordinance. Uh, we have uh, one, public speak, one public speaker slip filled out this evening in support of an ordinance. Um, all speakers on the Council variance, including city staff, area commissioners, applicants, and members of the public will be sworn in before they give testimony. Representatives of an area commission and applicants are always able to speak on an ordinance and do not need to fill out a speaker slip. On the advice of the city attorney's office, I will now swear in city staff. Please stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth and nothing but the truth as you shall answer the pains or penalty of perjury? If so, please say I do. I do. Thank you. Uh, please let the record reflect that Tim Dietrich from the Department of Building Zoning Services 
uh, Director Messer from D Department of Building Zoning Services and Dan Bleschmidt from Department of Public Service have been sworn in. Um, first, we have Ordinance 0172-2023 to rezone 3730 Westerville Road, being 1.32 plus acres located on the east side of Westerville Road, 870 plus feet south of Walnut Creek Drive from the LC2 Limited Commercial District to LM Limited Manufacturing District. The applicant is Colonial Landscaping, care of Jackson B. Reynolds Attorney. The proposed use is a landscaper's contractor facility, uh, City Department recommendations approval. The Development Commission's recommendation is approval 6-0. North, Northeast Area Commission's recommendation is also approval 7-0. Uh, do any of my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, uh, I first move to waive second reading. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa D. Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Hardin. Waived. Next, I move to amend as submitted to the clerk. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa D. Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Hardin. Amended. And next, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa D. Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Hardin. Passed. Thank you. We now move into the council variances for this evening. Uh, first, we have variance 0173-2023 for granted variance provisions of section 3312.27, parking setback line 3363.24, building lines and, uh, in an M manufacturing district, 3363.27B2, height and area uh, regulations, and 3363.41, storage of the Columbus City Codes. For the property located at 3730 Westville Road, to permit a reduced development standards for a landscape, landscape contract facility and the LM limited manufacturing district the applicant is colonial landscaping care of jackson b reynolds attorney proposed use as a landscaper's contract contract facility city department recommendation is approval northeast area commission's recommendation is also approval uh, first i move to waive second reading second please call the roll bankston barosa d padilla brown dorrance favor remy president harden Passed. uh waived uh, next i move to accept the entire staff report into evidence as an exhibit second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa D. Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Hardin. Accept it. Next, I move to adopt the findings of the staff as the findings of counsel. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa D. Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Hardin. Adopt it. Thank you. And finally, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa D. Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Hardin. Passed. Thank you. Next, we have variance 0174-2023 to grant a variance provisions of section 3351.03C1 permitted uses, 3312.21 landscaping and screening, 3312.39 stripping and marking, 3312.43 required surface parking, 3372.604 setback requirements, 3372.607 landscaping and screening, screening, 3372.609 parking and circulation of the Columbus City Code. So the property located at 827 East Main Street to permit a temporary parking parking lot with reduced development standards in the C1 commercial district and repeal ordinance number 1611-2020 uh, passed on July 20th of 2020. Uh, the applicant is Turner Construction, care of Charlie Egbert, proposed use as a temporary parking lot. City's department recommendation is approval. The nearest area commission's recommendation is approval 814. Uh, we have one public speaker who filled out a speaker slip to speak in uh, support of this ordinance, Ms. Kathleen Bailey. Ms. Bailey? Welcome back to council. And Ms. Bailey, before you give your comments, I'll swear you in real quick since this is a variance. Okay. Raise your right hand. Uh, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth and nothing but the truth as you shall answer the pains or penalty of perjury? If so, please say I do. I do. The floor is yours, Ms. Bailey. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President and distinguished members of council. Um, I'm here uh, to, in support of this ordinance. Um, I don't really want to talk about a garage or a parking lot or anything like that. I'm here because of my concern when the hospital came to the Near East Area Commission. I was a little taken aback about some of the comments and some of the things that were said to them. Uh, in fact, one of the, which isn't here tonight, they, they asked for a demolition and they got uh, almost half the commission voted against it. And it was for a property that they had deemed, their engineers had deemed they, can't, they couldn't rebuild it. And it wasn't even a very big lot. I don't know if that's what caused half the people to vote no, but I heard nothing in that presentation, uh, either from Ms. Fontaine or uh, Ms. Bingo, that warranted a no vote. I have been in that neighborhood, it'll be 34 years in June. Were you born? Uh -huh. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, I'll be there for 34 years. Uh, we have struggled for a long time to get things going, and the hospital, um, once they got, they, they opened up their the department that uh, Ms. Mingo leads, uh, and it got off to a kind of a slow 
struggling start, but once she got there, she really turned it around and got things going. But I have, the, I have known them to be open. They are, they just, they communicate. They have spent untold sums uh, helping us understand what's going on in the neighborhood. I mean, they've also done a very big four-way into affordable housing. They've got over 500 units, not only rental properties, but home ownership. And uh, I was going to go to one of their, their, their uh, housing things, and it was canceled because they'd already sold the properties. That's how strong the, uh, the commitment was. But I was concerned when I hear them being questioned and you know, hearing statements like, well, you've already been here for seven years. What is seven years when you do multi-million dollar development? What is a TARP? What do you care about that when all that development's been there? And what they've done, as I said, for, for affordable housing, these things bother me. So really what I'm just here is to let you know, I welcome them. They have been good in our neighborhood. They have always been had an open door. They've been included when I was on the commission. They included us in everything. So I just want to make sure that you understand they are welcomed in that neighborhood. I support them. If we have issues, you call them up, you get a call back. So I, I was just really taken aback about some of the things that were said to them. I mean, they weren't nasty things, but I just, I mean, they were questions that shouldn't have been because of the reputation that they have. And one of my favorite things to do in the summer is to go across that 18th Street Bridge and walk around their campus because it's absolutely mm. gorgeous. Mm. So that's really what I wanted to say, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Ms. Bailey. I appreciate you being here tonight. Um, we have uh, another speaker uh, to speak on this ordinance this evening, uh, Near East Area Commission Chair uh, Kate Curry D'Souza is also here. Chair, thank you for being here this evening. And also, I will swear you in before your comments as well. Um, of course. If you would mind raising your right hand, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth and nothing but the truth as you shall answer to the pains and penalty of perjury? If so, please say I do. I do. The floor is yours, Madam Chair. Good evening. Thank you very much for having me this evening. I come to you tonight in support of this project, but I'm in support of this only because of the collaboration of the developer, the community, and the Near East Area Commission and what we were able to come to. This public facing property on 18th and Main has been a temporary parking lot for seven years. It's been uh, ringed with torn tarping, temporary fencing, topped with barbed wire, broken sidewalks, trash, and occasionally even abandoned shopping carts. It's not a great look for the Near East Side. So while I recognize that Nationwide Children's Hospital has done a lot for our neighborhood, nobody's arguing that, but what can they do that's more? What more can we do, and how can we come to the table and support that more? So I can report to you today that the barbed wire has been removed because that's not what we want our kids to see in a pedestrian heavy area. And the tarping has been replaced and we now are having conversations about how to put murals on Main Street. And it, that's an exciting piece for our neighborhood because Main Street is important. And while I definitely recognize the hard work of former commissioners and those who live south of Maine, it's also a, a total Near East Side issue when we're talking about the upkeep and how developers come to the Near East Side. It's a hot area. We have a lot of great things going on on the Near East Side. And we'll continue to work hard to engage with those large developers and organizations that come here. But my ask is also tonight for you to help us hold them accountable to the community that they're serving together with us. Because it's not an, a them, it's not a you. It's a we, and we all have to be connected in, in holding up a level, a high level, um, high standards and, and a high level accountability because we really want great things for the entire Near East Side. And so that's part of what we were able to accomplish with this. You'll now see contact signs on the fencing for individuals to be able to call, or not call, but email at least on Children's Hospital if they have concerns about the property. The sidewalk is being replaced. 
um, in the areas where it was broken and, and not very usable. Um, and so these are the kinds of improvements that you task to the commission to try to hold the line for you as, as the council. And so we just really appreciate the opportunity to, to have those conversations, but also just lean into you to be able to make sure that we can hold them accountable. So I really am appreciative that this is an amendment from what it was, right? Because we're looking for change. And I really look to all of you and thank you for helping with that. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. And I think your comments, I think, uh, directly get to a lot of what we talk about, especially for large uh, institutions in our community that repeatedly come back to council to request a rezoning or variance. It is incredibly important to have area commissioners like yourself and members of the community engaged so that we know uh, at council that those uh, commitments are being upheld. Um, so, one, thank you for, for being here tonight, but uh, I would invite you, if, if there are ever instances in which you feel like someone is not um, holding up their end of the bargain, that commitment that was made at the commission, please never hesitate to reach out to me and my staff to make sure that we're aware of that, to make sure that we can do whatever we can to effectuate an, uh, a positive outcome. But also, these folks you know, come before us on a regular basis. That goes towards their credibility, not only with you, but also with us. So that's Agreed. important important for us to be aware of those things when and if they're not uh, happening in the way that the community has had as expected to see. So thank you for that. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Have a great night. Okay. Um, <clears throat> if there are, do any of my colleagues have any questions or comments at this point on this ordinance? Um, seeing none, I first move to waive second reading by voice. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Bankston. Yes. Ms. Barosa de Padilla. Yes. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mr. Dorans. Yes. Ms. Faber. Abstain. Mr. Remy. Yes. President Harden. Yes. Waive. Thank you. And next move to uh, accept the entire staff report. You can do evidence as an exhibit by voice. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Bankston. Yes. Ms. Barosa de Padilla. Yes. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mr. Dorans. Yes. Ms. Favor. Same. Mr. Remy. Yes. President Harden. Yes. Accept it. I next move to adopt the findings of staff as the findings of council by voice. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Bankston. Yes. Ms. Barosa de Padilla. Yes. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mr. Dorans. Yes. Ms. Favor. Same. Mr. Remy. Yes. President Harden. Yes. Adopt it. Thank you. And finally, I move for passage by voice. Second. Clerk, clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Bankston. Yes. Ms. Barosa de Padilla. Yes. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mr. Dorans. Yes. Ms. Faber. Mr. Remy. Yes. President Hart. Yes. Pass. Thank you. Next, we have uh, variance 0186-2023 to grant advance provisions of section 3312.25 maneuvering, 3312.29 parking spaces, uh, 3312.49C minimum number of parking spaces required, 3333.255 perimeter yard of the Columbus City Code. So the property located at 5050 Warner Drive to promote reduce development standards in the L LAR1 limited apartment residential district repeal ordinance number 1669-2022 passed on June 27, 2022. Uh, the applicant's preferred living care of Dave Perry agent uh, proposed use a multi-unit residential development. City's department recommendation is approval. The Rocky Fork Black Lake Accord implementation panel recommendation is also approval. Uh, I first move to waive second reading. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, President Harden. Waived. Next, I move to a top, accept the entire staff report into evidence as an exhibit. Clerk, Clerk please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, President Harden. Accept it. I next move to adopt the findings of staff, the findings of council. Clerk, Clerk please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, President Harden. Adopt it. Thank you. And finally, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Faber, Remy, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. And finally, we have variance 0217-2023 to grant advance provisions of section 3332.039, R4 Residential District 3312.49, minimum number of parking spaces required, 3332.05A4, Area District Lot Width Requirements, 3332.15, R4 Area District Lot Lot requirements 3332.19, fronting 3332.25, maximum side yard required 3332.26, minimum side yard permitted, and 3332.27, rear yard of the Columbus City Coast, so properly located at 515 East Hyman Avenue uh, to permit a two single unit dwellings on one lot with reduced development standards. In the R4 residential district, the applicant is Georgette Asa. Um, Brenda, Brenda Parker, architect. Um, the proposed use of a single unit dwelling with accessory dwelling unit. City's department recommendation is approval. Columbus Southside Air Commission recommendation is also approval 9 0. Uh, first, I move to waive second reading. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Uh, waived. 
Thank, thank you. I next move to accept the entire staff report into evidence as an exhibit. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Accept it. I next move to adopt the fines of staff as the fines of council. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Adopt it. And finally, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. Thank you, Council President. That's all we have in the zoning agenda this evening. Thank you, Mr. Chair. See no further business come for the zoning committee. Is there a motion to adjourn? Salute. Clerk, please call the roll. Thanks, Tim Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Torrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. We are adjourned. We'll go ahead. And